Hi, seventh grade. It's Mrs. Setter. It's Tuesday, March 24th. Hope everybody is doing good today. Uh, we are going to be working on page three in the packet, the second packet that you guys have, kind of, and I'm going to explain what I mean by that. Your packet looks like this. What I did is I took some of these questions and I put them on Google Classroom. So you're going to be answering that as homework. Um, and some of the, and the numbers aren't going to correlate exactly with what's on your packet. You're welcome to use your packet to work things out if you want to and then plug your answers into Google Classroom. Um, or you can just go directly into Google Classroom and answer the questions there. It doesn't matter. So again, you're not physically going to be working on the piece of paper unless you want to work it out first. Um, I need to have it submitted through Google Classroom, please. Um, so because of that, I had to pull some other questions that are very similar to what we're going to be doing today. Okay, so that just kind of gives you a preface of what we're going to be doing. This is almost exactly like what's in your packet, okay? They're, they're just a little tiny bit different. Okay, let's go ahead and begin uh, in prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you very much for joining me with that. Okay, we are taking sentences and changing them into a numerical expression. Now, the difference between an expression and an equation, an expression you can't really solve and there is no equal sign. So that's what we're going to be doing. An equation, on the other hand, has an equal sign and typically they want you to solve it. Now, all these problems have variables. We know what a variable is. It's the unknown and it can be any letter. Okay, let's change our sentences into numerical expressions. Four is added to x. So that's gonna look like four plus x. You could have also written it x plus four. Number two, add one third to three times y. Two different ways you could do this. Here's three times y. Remember, we want to show multiplication with the number right next to the letter, okay? We don't want to put in another x in there, okay, for a multiplication sign. I need to add one-third. You could have also written it like this. Okay. Five-sixths of b. Wherever you see that word of, think multiplication. So 5 sixths of b is added to 7. 5 sixths b, it's right next to it, indicating that that is multiplication, plus 7. Again, you could have also turned it around the other way, kind of like what we did up here. For the commutative property it allows us to do that. Okay, this one's a little tricky. 3 fourths of the sum of 8 and f. This is important information here. First of all, you got to know what the word sum means. Sum means addition. So if I'm going to put 8 plus f, it's going to look like that. I need to do that part first, so I'm going to put that in parentheses. And I want 3 fourths of so 3 fourths is going to go right outside your parentheses. Okay? You will tip it. In this case, you're going to want to put the 3 fourths first. You'll never see the 3 fourths on the other side of the parentheses. It's always going to be on this side. Okay. What I'd like to do is I'd like you to pause the video, and I'd like you to do the next ones for me, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And let me scooch this up so that you guys can see all of them here. This is supposed to say 10, okay? I think it got cut off when I printed it. So pause the video, go ahead and see if you can check or if you can solve these problems, changing them into numerical expressions. And then when we come back to the video, um, check your answers with mine. Now remember, this is kind of an honor, honor system, okay? So I'm trusting you guys that you're gonna be doing this uh, so that you can be able to figure out what, the, uh, what we're learning here today, okay? I want you to be able to master it. Okay, so go ahead and pause. Okay, we're back. This next one is x minus 6. Now it has to be in that order. 
It can't be in any other order because if you wrote it the other way around, it would be six minus X. You cannot use commutative property when you're talking about subtraction. Okay, S is added to two, that's pretty easy. S plus two. Here's another one of that of. One sixth of B is subtracted from four. This is important. We don't want one six B minus four. We have to start with the four first because this is subtracted from this. So make sure you have it in the right order. If you don't, please fix that because you may see that again. Minus one sixth B. Here's another one that's tricky. Take away, that means subtract, six from W. So we don't want to take away W from six. So you have to put the W first minus six, because we don't know the value of W, but we have to take six away from that. Four fifths of the sum of N and five, we did one similar to this up on number four. So N plus five, because that's the sum of, and four fifths of, that goes right on the outside. Subtract one fourth from seven times X. This is one of those tricky ones again. From seven times X, like we did up here, your seven times X needs to come first. And remember, you're gonna wanna write it like that. Okay, you're not gonna wanna write it with a multiplication sign in the middle there. That would be very confusing. If you did this, you're not gonna know what's a multiplication and what's a variable. So we don't wanna write it that way. We wanna write it this way. Seven X minus one fourth. Okay. So hopefully you guys are on the right track and you're getting this. If you're not, go ahead and watch the video again and notice when I really you know, pointed certain things out to you that were important. Uh, so what I'd like to, you to do is go ahead and go on Google Classroom. And I think I put five or six questions. I can't remember how many I did. Um, but you can go ahead and write your answers there. Um, if you need to write something in fraction form, um, I don't know if you're going to need to, but if you do, um, when you type in your numbers, like say you're trying to write three fourths um, on Google Classroom in fraction form, all you have to do is type a three, no spaces, a slash, and then a four, and it's kind of cool. When I did this on Google Classroom, it automatically made it a little bit smaller and it made it look a little bit different so I could tell that that was a fraction. Okay, so hopefully that'll help you. Go ahead and finish, uh, go ahead and do your homework and submit that through Google Classroom and we'll talk again tomorrow. Okay, well you guys have a good day and Sacred Heart of Jesus, pray for us.